I will protect you from all sinful reactions. Ma suchaha. Do not fear. Don't worry. Don't even doubt for a second that this process of surrender is going to protect you and give you everything you're looking for. And if your heart is open, if you're, in other words, if uh, you're not completely asleep, <laughs> you will feel it. Whenever you chant Krishna's holy name or whenever you try to please Krishna in any way, you'll feel his response, his reciprocation. That's the wonderful thing about this devotional service. It's not just theoretical. It's practical. It's every minute of every day. Krishna can respond to us instantly if we please him. Huh? And if we, even if we don't please him, if we simply try, then we'll get more facility in the future, which means we'll understand things better. We'll get a better uh, grip on the knowledge of the esoteric teaching. Or we'll come in contact with someone who can show us, who can teach us, who can give the example of how we can surrender to Krishna. The key is to make the life purpose, uh, to make our reason for living, to please Krishna. If we love Krishna, just like if, if we love a person in this material world, we make it the uh, purpose of our life to please them, isn't it? I see so many people who are married and have families and they're working like dogs just to support the family, put the kids through college, have a nice house, a nice car, nice, you know, sense enjoyment for their family members. Huh? So if, if people can work like that hard just for another human being, we should be able to work that hard, at least that hard, for God, for Krishna, the source of everything. When our faith matures, then we reach that point where we understand that Krishna is everything. Uh, there isn't anything that doesn't exist without Krishna. So Krishna is everything. Krishna is time. Krishna is space. Krishna is the material energy, the spiritual energy. Krishna is consciousness. Krishna is everything. Uh, so we should make the purpose of our life to please Krishna because Krishna is also love. Uh, and love is the most important motivating factor in the human psychology. So if we love Krishna, if we really follow this path of bhakti, and we find so many attractive things about Krishna, things that are much more beautiful, much more attractive than any other being, then we can simply make the purpose of our life to please Krishna by our service, and then we get all of the benefits of being in relationship with Krishna. It's better to be a servant in the palace of the king than to be the master of a slum. Uh, this material world is a slum. So who wants to be master of this material world when everything is falling apart, everything is temporary, everything is imperfect? Huh? Who wants to be master of that? It's a mess. But the spiritual world is so perfect that even if you're a servant, even if you're the lowest servant in the spiritual world, you're enjoying far more than any master of this material world. So strive to become Krishna's servant. Uh, strive to become his uh, best servant, his closest confidant, his uh, most reliable uh, emissary or representative in this material world, and then you will get all the benefits of living with Krishna. So, now it's time to change the tape. So please uh, write your questions on the chat, and then uh, after the break, we'll address them. Hare Krishna. Shastra Chakshus means to see through the eyes of the scripture. And the scripture is there to give us not exactly uh, specific instructions. Well, in some cases it does, but more often it gives principles. Principles by which we can understand what is going on or what is the right thing to do. Okay? So, let's say a situation comes up where we have to think over several alternatives and decide what's the right course of action to take. Like, for example, right now we're getting ready to make a big road trip. 
And so there's so many details to take care of. Uh, nobody can, no human mind is big enough or uh, has a good enough memory to think of everything. Huh? You always get halfway down the road and realize, ah, oh, I forgot this or that. You know? And the, one of the biggest problems that we've been thinking over is whether we should uh, get expensive repairs done to our vehicle. Uh, we took it down to the local dealership and we had them put it on the analyzer and run all the tests and everything. And basically it came back with a clear bill of health, except there's a problem with the power steering and the front suspension. So should we spend a lot of money to get this fixed? They were quoting like, what was it? One part was a thousand dollars. I mean, they were quoting this outrageous amount of money. So we sat around, thought about it for a minute, and it was like, don't get the work done here. Just get the diagnosis done and then take it to a cheaper mechanic. Now that you, you've had the dealer go through it, they have all the manuals, they have the analyzer, they have all the stuff. And then we can take it to somebody else to have, once we know what needs to be done, we can have the work done somewhere else where it's cheaper. And so, you know, we spent a hundred bucks on, on having it diagnosed. But then we went down the street to this other mechanic and he agreed to do, to rebuild the part instead of replace it for like 15% of what the cost would be if we had it done at the dealer. Uh, and what, what happened? It wound up taking uh, a few more days. Instead of leaving today or tomorrow, we have to leave Tuesday or Wednesday, that's all. But then we have a vehicle that we can count on and we know that the steering is not going to break for another five or ten years. So I would much rather spend the time now uh, and spend a little uh, energy and intelligence figuring out a clever solution to the problem now than have to deal with a possible emergency on the road later. This is intelligence. Intelligence means taking several uh, different alternative solutions, uh, some of which are mutually exclusive and others of which, you know, can be adjusted in different ways, and then coming up with the ideal course of action in a particular situation. Now, Krishna has been guiding us through this whole thing. Huh? And not only allows us to have a much better uh, condition of, in our vehicle, it also allows us to, like, finish up the, uh, the newsletter, uh, finish up the, uh, you know, the video uh, stuff from this satsang and so on like that. So Krishna has been giving us instructions, literally giving instructions this whole time. Do this, don't do that. And sometimes he will wait. Uh, like I'll think, oh, the best way to do this thing is like that, like this. And then we'll get halfway through and Krishna will say, no, actually you should do it like that. And then we'll change all of a sudden. And nobody will be able to understand why. Poor Florian. He has to put up with me. <laughs> no, do it this way. But you said, no, no, I, I, no, don't do it like that. Do it like this. <laughs> and he's sitting there trying to figure this all out. <laughs> but the real thing is that Krishna is speaking and giving instructions. Uh, Krishna reveals himself in his personal form to those who surrender completely unto him within their hearts. In fact, there's even a wonderful shloka in the Ramayana where Krishna says, or Lord Rama says, when a man surrenders unto me, praying sincerely from the core of his heart, my Lord, from this day I am yours. From that moment on, I guide him and protect him in every way until he comes back to me in the spiritual world. Uh, this is the most wonderful shloka. And it's true. It's true. Even uh, a devotee uh, may fall down or may have problems on the spiritual path. But if there was one time when they sincerely surrendered to the Lord, surrendered themselves from their heart, uh, from that moment, Krishna takes charge of them. And all they have to do is relax their mind and let him through. And he will give them the instructions that are required to 
uh, perform whatever is their service. So this is Krishna. This is God. God is all-pervading, omnipotent, all-knowing, uh, and pure love. His love is not, uh, how can I say, impure, like the love in this material world. In this material world, if someone loves you, there is always some personal motivation in that. But Krishna doesn't need anything from us. What have we got that would be useful to him except our love? So when we give our love to him voluntarily by our own initiative, uh, without being pressured or influenced, co coerced in any way, when we do that, he responds immediately and you can feel that. And he also responds intellectually. If we give our intellect to him, if we give our mind to him, he also 